Last time on the Skip and Josh podcast. I want to congratulate the Atlanta Braves on winning the World Series. I know that pains you to say. The listeners watching the live stream can see Josh rolling his eyes and shaking his head. I, I was watching the last game, and where and when there were two outs in the ninth inning, I turned off the television because I did not want to see the third out, and I did not want to see the celebration, so I turned it off. So as far as I'm concerned, I don't even know who won. You're listening to the Skip and Josh podcast with Skip Sherman and Josh Obadia. Okay, Skip, so today's episode is going to be a little bit different than uh, the episodes we've done for the past year. We don't have a topic. We're not going to count down our favorite this or that. Um, We decided since the last 14 days have been quite eventful in the world that we're going to just talk about random things that have happened in the last 14 days. And so they could have happened to us or we could have watched them on television or it could even be something that happened a year ago, but I just discovered it yesterday because, you know, I'm always late getting on board these things. So that's mm-hmm. what today's episode is going to be. So I wrote down a bunch of topics like I do all the time, right? I write down things that I might want to talk about. I'm usually saving them for the closing part of the show, but, you know, now it's going to be the show like we used to do. Um, but like most of my stuff is sports. Like, is do you have a lot of sports or is it a mix of everything? I have some sports, but it's actually mostly not sports, I think. Okay, good. We'll have a good we'll have a good mix. We'll have a good mix. Right, but before we get started actually, I do want to ask you if we got any listener mail about our last episode which seems like it's such a long time ago. Mailbag. We didn't get any mail about Pearl Jam, sorry to say. Um, but um friend of the show Derek did message me saying that uh he liked my list a little bit better than your list, like <laughs> Um, and he, he liked my, he agreed with me about, um, Alive and Even Flow. That's also his, like two of his big favorite songs. Um, but, but what we did get is, um, I put, a I, I tagged you on Facebook, which you didn't know. I had to text you to tell you that I tagged you on Facebook and then you still didn't go and check it. Um, <laughs> that, uh, I put like a congratulations to us for our five year, uh, podcast anniversary. And I actually got such a big response. There was like. 50 plus likes and like 10 comments and congratulations and muzzle tubs and it was really like uh quite nice to to get like a um a response like that just from like facebook followers so that was that was nice so you're right i didn't look at it and it's a good thing that you told me because the weirdest thing happened i was uh out walking with a friend of mine and we bumped into another friend of ours um all of us are are members at the same tennis club and no one at the tennis club knows that I do a podcast. And yet one of the people that we bumped into, she said she congratulated me on the podcast. <laughs> and I mean, I, very nice woman, but she's 70 something years old. And I'm sure she's never listened to any of our episodes. So I said right. to her, I said, how do you even know I have a podcast? Cause I never told her. Right. And so she told me she saw it on Facebook. And then uh-huh. I remembered that her and I are friends on Facebook, and I remembered you that go. you said you tagged me. So I put two and two together, and that's how it happened. But, like, I would have been so confused. Oh, that's just so funny. I love it. You can't get away. You try not to be on Facebook, Josh. You try your best. You still – you can't get away from it. By the way, you – you uh, just to back up a little bit, you, you mentioned Pearl Jam earlier. And yeah. um, one thing that we both said about Pearl Jam is – a lot of their songs, and this is what we like about them, they have this slow build. Oh, yeah. And so I, I'm sure you've listened to the latest episode of The Ongoing History of New Music. I did, yeah. And one of the things they talk about is now the way artists get paid, you know, if their song is streamed, uh, a listener must listen to at least the first 30 seconds of the song. And so a lot of artists are changing the way they write songs. They're not doing the slow build because they don't want to lose your attention. They want you to keep listening. So a band like Pearl Jam or U2 and all these older bands that have all these slow builds, they might have never survived in this era of streaming music. I highly recommend that episode for anybody who really wants to have like a basic to good understanding of how artists get paid for streaming music versus how they used to get paid before. It's really, really informative. It's actually one of the most detail and and more complicated episodes of this podcast. In, in a way, it's like the one of the least like 
I don't love that episode that much. It's almost like t- reading a textbook, <laughs> you know, but it was very confusing it, some parts actually. A hundred percent because, you know, it's a, it's a much more complicated topic than he usually goes into. But like I said, if you really want to learn about how streaming works, um, it's, it's a great, it's, it's, I highly recommend the episode. So, so, um, I'm going to start with the simplest topic and it's going to last about 10 seconds and you're not going to answer and we're going to go to the next topic. Okay. <laughs> the National Football League. So I know you're not watching the NFL. You don't watch any NFL. I watched, um, I've watched a total of four quarters of NFL football, I think. Mm. But I imagine you're following news around the NFL. Yes. So all I, all I want to say is that Aaron Rodgers can go f- himself and then we can go to the next topic. Actually, this <laughs> is on my list. I knew it would be. But way down. And so my question to you was going to be, who is more annoying, Aaron Rodgers or Pat McAfee? Because I actually watched the full-length interviews, the last two that he's done with Pat McAfee. I like Pat McAfee. I think he's fun. I think he's a fun, fun, like, interviewer. You know who he was. He was a punter, right? Like, this right, guy but was like, an NFL can punter. he at least not put on a shirt during his show? I know, I know. He, he Pat McAfee is not a serious journalist. He's just a guy out to have fun and usually the interviews he does are these fun clips almost like cabbie used to do on tsn it's like it's meant to be it's meant to be fun it's not meant to be informative Mm -hmm. and i think i think like when you start to see that aaron Rodgers and pat mcafee interview it starts off like fun and then all of a sudden the light bulb goes off in pat mcafee's head and he's like oh boy (laughs) i'm on this is gold you know like he realizes i just have to like i just have to like turn off my mic and just let aaron Rodgers talk And then this is going to be everywhere, you know? You're right. But like, there was one simple question that he didn't ask him that I would have loved to have heard the answer to when Roger said that he's taken steps to get immunized. What steps did he take to get immunized? I still don't know. And I'm sure a lot of people would like to know because um, there are probably others that don't want to get the vaccine, but if there's another way to get immunized, and I don't even know what that word means, by the way, then I would like to know what those steps are. Yeah, I would like to. I would love to, for him to said exactly what he did, but he didn't want us to do that. That's the whole point. Rogers is never going to say that. The whole point is he's actually embarrassed. He's he's actually embarrassed, but he won't admit it. He knows he's wrong, but he won't admit it. He knows he looks stupid, but he won't admit it. And he knows that if he says that he took a horse dewormer, people are going to make fun of him. And he doesn't want people to make fun of him. That's why he didn't come out and say from the beginning that he didn't get vaccinated because he didn't want all the negative press. So like like I said from the beginning, he could just go away. I don't want to ever... Re- Look, I hate the Green Bay Packers. I hate the Green Bay Packers. They are number two on my hated team list, re- well below the Dallas Cowboys, but they're still number two. And like... I always liked Aaron Rodgers. I love watching him play. I think he's a great, fun-to-watch quarterback in the NFL. When you watch Aaron Rodgers play quarterback, it's beautiful. He's amazing. But I'm not going to ever root for him again. Point final. World Cup soccer. We'll move on to the next topic, and I'm sure this is Mm -hmm. on your list. Sure. And it's the Canadian men's national soccer team. Uh, We never actually talked about, you know, you came here in October... Uh, we went to see Canada play against Panama. I don't think we actually talked about it. Canada won that we, game. We talked four about one. it at the we talked about it at the end of one of our episodes, but and we just said I remember saying like it was a great experience. It was a very patriotic, but we didn't get into much of like the the details about Canada qualifying and the ramifications and the World Cup and you know all this stuff, you know. But we just said we had a great time, you know. Right, and we did, and they won that yeah. game. And now fast forward a month later, Canada played two games this week, both in Edmonton, and won yeah. both of them against you know probably the best team in the whole group, Mexico, at least Mexico yeah. has been for years. Since since they've been doing World Cup qualifying and North American teams are qual- trying to qualify, Mexico's the best team in our, our area by a mile. Right. I don't think Mexico has ever played a game in the snow before. Um, no. and, uh, and as you saw yourself, the pitch was in very poor quality, uh, but it was poor quality for both teams. It was embarrassing. The field was embarrassing. And and that and that's not not an indictment on Canada soccer or whatever, but like the CONCACAF Federation shouldn't allow the game to be played on that type of field, but they kind of have no choice because we're talking about other countries in the group that are extremely poor. They don't have infrastructure, so they can't force them to make the fields a certain way and but you know, in the actual World Cup, you would not be allowed to play on artificial surface. You wouldn't be. That it's not allowed, you know? Right. I mean, you can't have real grass in Edmonton in November. 
Yeah, no, but then they shouldn't have had the game in there. You know, right? They well, have had you know, you know else, why? But... It's all this uh, gamesmanship. You know why the game was scheduled in Edmonton? Look, I love the fact that the game was in the snow. When we, when all the for 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 fifty years, we're going to Mexico and getting our asses handed to us because we can't breathe in that atmosphere. And Mexico has a huge uh, home field advantage. Now, other teams like. Costa Rica, Honduras, El Salvador, like these countries also have a massive home field advantage when we go there because the fans are nuts and the refs are intimidated by the fans who are nuts. And we, we, it's very difficult to win uh, in those stadiums. So like, why not like throw, turn the table and make it difficult for other teams to play in our stadium, you know, which is what they had. I, I agree with you. I mean, I heard that uh, when Canada played in Mexico, I don't know if it was the last time or the time before that the fans threw bags of urine at the Canadian players. Oh, so, I, I, there's there's all kinds of stuff that goes on in the South American. So Olympics. so I don't I don't feel bad that we played in the snow and it was a disadvantage. By the way, Canada almost blew that game at the end. Like luckily for our goalie that he made some crazy saves at the end. Otherwise, we could have lost that game. Yeah, they fell asleep for the last ten minutes and Mexico woke up and next thing you know, it was all of a sudden it was like in jeopardy. But I mean, boy oh boy, I just. It, it's amazing. Like th- this conversation we're having is amazing because I am a soccer fan. I follow soccer. I follow the English Premier League. I follow the Champions League. I subscribe to streaming services just to watch those games. I am a legitimately big fan and a knowledgeable fan. But the fact that you want to talk about this, you are exactly the target market that Soccer Canada wants to get. This is the reason why they put the games on TSN and Sportsnet to get you, Josh, to watch. And it's working. <laughs> and it it's is, working. It is working. And, and you know, listen, when my country is playing, whether it's men's soccer, women's soccer, men's hockey, women's hockey, whatever, I'm going to watch. So especially if the team is good, like, listen, Canada soccer hasn't been great for basically my entire life. So this they only is, ever made the World Cup once. It was in 1986. And right. we didn't score a goal during the tournament, by right. the way. So right now they're in first place in this uh, tournament and they're, they're, listen, I know everyone's very excited, but there's very few points separating first place and fourth place and there are still six games to go. So a lot can happen. So I'm not punching any tickets yet, but I am very excited because the hardest part of our schedule has already been played. So now we do still have to play, I think the United States, but we're playing them at home. That helps. Mm-hmm. And we've and we're done with Mexico, which is and, and we're done like, with Mexico. So And not only are we done with Mexico, we got a tie and a win against Mexico, which is absolutely unbelievable. Right. You know? So there's a lot to be excited for with Canadian soccer. There's huge and, and that celebration in the snow. Um I forget the name of the player. He was um he ju- number three. He jumps into the snowbank as they're all celebrating. I mean, that's just like that's going to live on in highlight films like forever. By the way, forever. If, if I did that, I would not be getting up because I I would be my back would be broken. <laughs> so I'm glad it. I'm glad he's younger and in much better shape than I am. Right. So I mean the next games I think are only in February, like, in January, 20, February. Yeah. And they haven't announced actually where the games are going to be played when Canada plays at home. I was thinking about that, but in January, February in Canada, you can really only play indoors, I would imagine. So that leaves you with the Rogers Center or BC Place. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, where else I mean, could it be? Uh, it's, it better not be in Edmonton, I'll tell you right now. Right. <laughs> Major League Baseball. So Josh, baseball. MLB, they gave out their MVP award. Oh, you're reading my mind. It's next on my list. First of all, I was so surprised that Bryce Harper won the National League MVP. I did not realize that he had such a good season. He had a he had a really good August and September, which helped because right. you know everyone remembers what you do at the end of the year, right? Right, right. So So congratulations to him for that. And then of course Shea Otani won the American League MVP. That's no one's surprise either. And he actually won it in unanimous uh, unanim- fashion. Exactly, unanimous vote. So I, I looked at the voting, you know, obviously he got all the votes and then Vlad Guerrero Jr. got all the second place votes, I think, except for one. So um, congratulations to him. But I like I think we never talked about this on air, but we talked about this just on regular conversations when we weren't recording a podcast. It'll be interesting to see what happens like next year and the year after, because like everybody's like, oh, Otani has to be MVP because he pitched and he hit 40 home runs and he 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 pitched and he was good at both. And like this has never happened before. But like 
This is going to happen every year. Right. I'm glad you brought this up because it does bother me a little bit because obviously, right. you know, when you can do two things, when you can do, when one person can do what two players do normally, yeah. how can yeah. you not be the MVP? However, you know, let's say, let's say, you know, his stats were similar to what he did this year or maybe a little yeah. bit worse, right? Let's yeah. say he has yeah. a good year pitching, not great. And let's say he has a good year hitting, but not great. So if you took those numbers separately, he would never be the best pitcher and he would never be the best hitter. But if you put them together, if he just has an average year hitting and an average year pitching, then according to that theory, he should be the MVP every year. I agree. And you know what's going to happen? He's going to have the same season next year. Otani, he's going to have the same season. Maybe let's say, let's give him like five homers less. He's only hits 35 homers, but he has around the same amount of uh, pitching stats. The same thing. He does exa- almost the same thing. And Vlad Guerrero Jr. has the same year. Same year, right? Vlad Guerrero Jr. will win the MVP. Why? Because the MVP is stupid <laughs> and the voters are stupid. And they're going to say, well, we already did that once. Now we're going to give it to someone else. It's like, it's all about, it's all about what's the best story. What is, what is the story that everybody's talking about? And that's why Otani won. He deserved it. But like, like you just said, if he won this year, he needs to win every single year that he bats and pitches every single year. (laughs) Right. So like, this is why I'm a little bit annoyed by the whole thing. I mean, I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it, but it's, you know, again, all he has to do is have a, an average year pitching and an average year hitting. And then according to this philosophy, he should be the MVP every year. Because he does yeah, two but things. We'll see. But but you know, the MVP awards in all the leagues, it's a popularity contest. It's not. No. Right. I am glad to see that finally, both MVPs were not on playoff teams because all I hear every year is, yeah. oh, well, this guy can't win the MVP because his team finished in last. And I know that yeah. Toronto did not finish last, but the Angels were not good. And yet he yeah. still won the MVP, which I'm happy to see because I don't think you have to be on a winning team to be the MVP. I I think it should just be based on your numbers. And this year it was. I agree. Good stuff. And and just to stick with baseball, Josh, (laughs) you know, baseball's heading for a work work stoppage, everybody says. Yes, I heard that. All the writers. I heard that. Like, it's it's absolutely unreal. So December 1st, if they don't reach a deadline by December 1st, which they're not going to because they're not even negotiating right now, and Mm -hmm. that's 10 days away. Um. So that means that probably on December 2, the, the players are going to be locked out. And uh, good times for baseball. <laughs> like like base MLBPA and the MLB owners, like these guys, they just can't get out of each other's way. Like they just can't get out of each other's way. You know, if they would just talk to each other and say, hey, we want to play. We want to make money. Hey, we want you guys to play. We want to make money. Let's make money together. It's roses. It's gold. And- but they can't do that because they're stupid. And the thing is, you know what? If there is no season next year, like I won't even care. If there's no season next year, the both sides are going to make a huge mistake because their popularity is going to plummet. It's going to like they are going to be off the map. They are going to be so far off the map in terms of their place in the world of sports. They don't even I don't think either side realizes how easily they could disappear. They're already, they already have problems because it's such a slow game. So anyone like your son's age has no interest yeah. in baseball already. Oh, zero. And like when I watch playoff, when I watch playoff baseball, the world series or the playoffs, Matthew comes down. He's like, oh, who's winning? I'm like, oh, he goes, oh, okay, good. And then he leaves. Right, right. <laughs> so it. already like kids that age aren't watching and the games are way yeah. too long and the games are way too slow. So, yeah. you know, this is like, this could be the the final nail in the coffin. Now, the one thing baseball has going for it, the one thing is that it's in the summer and most of the other leagues don't play in the summer. So yeah. they don't have a lot of competition. But you're right. If they don't have a season, that could be the end. And I won't even feel bad about it. TV? I'm going to group like three or four things into this one section. Sure. Things that I watched on TV in the last 14 days. Oh, this is great. Let's hear it. So there's a long list, actually. First of all, let me just tell you, um, I, I subscribe to Bell, and every month, Bell has like this free preview of different channels. They give you like 10 channels for free. Usually, nine of those channels are channels that I will never watch. Um, but sometimes, the channel they give you is good. Like in October, one of the channels was the MLB Network, which, you know, that's a good time to do it because they had some live baseball games in October. So this month... One of the channels that is free is the W Network. 
However, unfortunately, oh. if you watch the W Network, the only thing on that channel now are all those Hallmark movies. Well, this is exactly what my wife is watching right now as we're recording. Right. And she's been watching it since this morning. And she'll watch one movie and then the next and the next. And she's like, I think I saw this one or I think I didn't see this one. Oh, and then it's like the thing is sometimes you get confused about which ones you saw because the same actors are in different movies. And they're all right? the same storyline. Well, they're all loosely the same. You know, it's like the stories are basically the same. It's just that the 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 setting or the premise, like the whatever their their jobs are or whatever city they're in, like changes, you know, but it's the same movie over and over. But there is actually this one show on W that just started, I think, three weeks ago. And I think there's only going to be one season of it from what I've read. Um, and it's called, and I keep seeing promos for it. And originally I'm like, oh, this looks terrible. I'm not going to watch it. And I kept seeing promos. And finally I decided, okay, let's watch it. It's called One of Us is Lying. Have you seen oh, this? Oh, I saw the, no, but I saw the commercial for it. But that looks like a teen show. No, we're too yeah, old for that. Yeah, it's basically no? like 90210. Yeah, yeah, that's what it looks like. I, I started watching. I'm three episodes in and whatever. I mean, if it's only one season, it's not a big investment. But it's actually kind of, it's actually kind of interesting. And I, I'm not going to uh, give you any spoilers here because this happens like in the first 10 minutes of the first episode. Do you know anything about the show? No, nothing. Okay, so five students go into detention, and only four of them come out alive. Oh, okay. So so someone's lying, right? Okay, right, gotcha. Right. Yeah. Anyway. So what else you got? Quickly, rapid fire, what have you been watching? Okay, so another show you recommended, I watched Clickbait. Yeah, that's good. That, it was interesting. I, I wasn't yeah. expecting the ending, that's for sure. And then um, I finally watched Ted Lasso. Oh, really? Season one that I gave you? Yes. So now I have a few things to say about Ted Lasso, if, uh -huh. if, you'll, if you'll allow me. Sure. So it's a good show. I like it. Um, yeah. I know there's a second season. I don't know why there's a second season, though, because it seems to me like everything got resolved at the last episode of season one. And mm -hmm. what was good about season one is there's a villain, but the villain is no longer the villain. Yeah. So I don't know what season two is going to be. I know you've watched it. Don't tell me. I don't want any spoilers. Well, you, you've you identified some of the problems of season two. It's just not as strong because there's not like one central story and one central plot that's like going through all the season. But I but season two is still really good and in many ways and it gets stronger as it goes. So um, I'll have to download you season two. <laughs> So I have to talk about Saturday Night Live. For those who don't know, the way I watch Saturday Night Live, I don't watch it live because, first of all, it starts after my bedtime. And second of all, 75% of the show is useless, so I want to fast forward those parts. So I record it and I watch it on Sunday. So last episode was actually one of the better episodes I've seen because I always watch the opening, the cold open. I always watch the monologue. I always watch the, the weekend update news section. I know you're a big fan of the weekend update. Yes, I am. And I always, well, I don't always, but if it's a musical guest that I like, I watch the musical guest. So mm. last episode, I think you may have watched because the musical guest was Taylor Swift. And I know you're a fan. I only watched the Taylor Swift part. So as I'm watching it, and remember, I was watching it a day later. I'm thinking to myself, this song is kind of long. Like yeah. you normally the artists do two songs, but this song is kind of long. I wonder if, if she's actually going to do a second song and sure enough, mm -hmm. she didn't. She only did one because that one song was like 10 minutes long. So then after I watched the episode, I, I Googled, you know, Taylor Swift and whatever, because I'm sure everyone was talking about it on Twitter and oh, Instagram. It's huge. This is, this is huge. The whole world's talking about right, this. Right. Exactly. So sure yeah. enough, I find it quite easily and turns out like the actual song is actually 13 minutes and she shortened it to 10 just for, for Saturday Night Live. And there's a whole, like, like a whole, sh like a, um, a movie, really. It's not just a song. It's like, it's a mm -hmm. whole movie. And so I watched the well, full- Well, on, on Saturday Night Live, when she was performing, the movie was playing behind her. Right, but not the full movie. No, no, not- Like, the, I watched not, the full not, movie. Yeah. And there's some parts where she stops singing in the full movie, and it's just dialogue. It's like an actual movie. So then, uh, and then I'm reading some some comments and and and- and then, you know, I don't listen to radio stations that play Taylor Swift. So I don't right. really follow or know anything that's going on. But then I hear like Tony Kornheiser's talking about T Taylor Swift. Everyone's talking about Taylor Swift. It's all over the news. And so then I decided because like I'm hearing all about, it, I watched on, on Netflix 
Miss Americana. I actually watched it this week. What? Because I you wanted to see that? what all the hype was about. I mean, I've never watched that Miss Americana. Um, Selena told me that I have to watch it and I should love it. For, for full disclosure, my daughter, Selena, is a massive Taylor Swift fan. She explained to me everything about that song. She explained to me everything about the... Like, she explained to me everything that's going on with Taylor Swift so that I would have a full understanding. She told me all, like, the Easter eggs that are in the song and in the movie. You know, these are little clues she gives to the fans about what's what. Like, I, I got, like, I got, you know, like, you could say, like, I got Taylor Swift 101 would mean, like, I did the intro course. I'm, like, I'm like on Taylor Swift 405, you know? Like, I got I got the advanced lesson, you know? So I might need to take that class because obviously I don't know everything, but watching this Miss Americana, you know, that shed some light on things too. Yeah. I mean, look, I I like Taylor Swift. Like you said, I I am a fan of her music, but I think I'm like, I'm, I'm like a bit lost with, with some of the stuff now. And it's, 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 it's almost like overkill. And, and I like that 10 minute song all too well. I think it's really good, but like, I think the the original five minute song that she put out or whatever, how many years ago, that was fine too. You know, like, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. All right. So I've talked enough. So go ahead. <laughs> oh, but I, do you have other shows that you watched or? Um, or I think I've mentioned all of them. <laughs> College basketball. So did you watch, I know you're watching a lot of Duke basketball, like the season started. Yes. The season started. I haven't watched the last two games, but I did watch, yeah. I think the first, three or something. I think they've played five games. Well, we started off with a huge win over Kentucky. That was big. Yes. And then after Kentucky, like they didn't really play anybody good. <laughs> like we played Gardner Webb and like Lafayette and whatever, but like I never ever heard, I've been following college basketball since 1987, you know, and I've never heard of the university Campbell. <laughs> I, I thought you had because you recall that one time I called my fantasy team the Camels and it was because of the Campbell Camels. That's why I oh, named my fantasy team. Oh, you're right. I forgot about that. Okay. So yes, they are in the back of my memory. I should have known better. I should have known better. But like yeah. what school names their team the Camels? Think about it. You always want an it's animal really... that's like fierce or fast or ferocious. And here they call themselves the Camels. They're asking for trouble. So next week there's like a big game, uh, Duke versus Gonzaga. That's going to be like big. So that should really give us a real good indication of where Duke is. Cause Gonzaga is most people's number one, or at least, you know, top four, you know? So unfortunately the game starts at 10 30 and you and I will both be asleep before tip off. Yeah. That's a tough one. 10 30 <laughs> start. Yeah. Obviously in the news, like uh, a couple of Duke players were involved in a DUI incident and they have a court date in December. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I mean, Look, one of the players is a walk-on. He does. He'll probably play less than ten minutes the entire season, so that doesn't affect the team on the court. Uh, the other one is uh, Paolo Banquero, who's like everybody. He's definitely a lottery pick, and most mock drafts have him actually as the top pick in the upcoming draft. Um, I mean, he wasn't driving the car. I don't think he's going to face really a stiff penalty, but I mean, should know better. You know, that's all. Right. I actually was a little disappointed that that Paolo Banquero played like the very next game. I know yeah. that uh, obviously the 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 thing that he was cited for, called aiding and abetting, is a yeah. much lesser um, crime than driving while under the influence. Yeah. But still, I thought that it was a little bit, I don't know, maybe insulting that he actually played. Like he played, he started, he played the full game, and Duke could have easily sent a message saying, "Okay, he's gonna, we're gonna suspend him for a couple of games." And like, I did, I did a little bit of research on all on this whole thing, and I actually sent you a link to a podcast, which I don't know if you've had a chance to uh, no, listen to. No, I was to. gonna, I was gonna listen to it today. So, yeah. so it turns out, um, a few years ago, they made a rule at many colleges in the United States that you can't drink alcohol on campus which Mm -hmm. sounds like it's a good rule because there's a lot of underage kids on campus that are not allowed to drink. But now what's happening is is make them, all it makes them do is leave campus, drink, and then get into a car drunk. Correct. Exactly. So that's exactly what happened that night. I'm not saying that makes it okay. Um, No, no, of course not. But that's what happened. So, um, and by the way, the, the, the player who was driving the vehicle, who you said he's probably only going to play 10 minutes all year, happens to be the grandson of Coach K. Right. Kind of crazy. Now, I did, I did remember one other thing that I watched. Uh, I did watch about one quarter of Peyton and Eli watch Monday Night Football. Oh, how did you like it? It's better than the actual game. 
Oh, way better. Like, like it's exactly what I told you when I told you about it. Like, if the Eagles are playing the Cowboys on Monday Night Football, I'm not going to watch the Peyton and Eli thing because I'm invested in the game. But who was playing last game on Monday night? I, I, I couldn't even remember. It. it was San Francisco and the LA Rams. Exactly. So like, it, it, you know, if it's just the teams that you're just going to, you're just watching because you want to see like how you're going to do in fantasy football, right? Or you just like, because something's on and you want to see the score or whatever, it's much more entertaining to have the Peyton and Eli because it's pretty good, right? It's pretty good. I didn't realize this, but they have, they have guests every quarter, like a different there's guest. A, there's, there's a curse going on, you know, like, Oh, I know about the curse. Yes. <laughs> But there weren't any football players this time. They were all other athletes. All the guests that were on <laughs> lost their game the next week. This this week they had Draymond Green, right? So like I don't know what happened with the Warriors. That's T broke the curse because the Warriors are winning all the time. They, they right, lose. right. But they also had yeah. Phil Mickelson and they also had Al Michaels. Um, and some of the guests are actually, right. you know, it's a good thing they have guests because it was just Peyton and Eli for four quarters. I don't think I could watch that. So maybe the last topic before we get to the end, Josh, do you want to look, do talk a little bit about hockey? The National Hockey League. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> the Habs stink. Oh, the Habs are terrible. <laughs> it's it's an embarrassment. Like I did say to you that this could be a historically bad team. I said this to you like a month ago. But the thing is, on paper, they should they're not a good team on paper. Let me just preface that, right? But at minimum, it should be close to a 500 team, don't you think? Like at minimum, it's, you, it, they should be they should be better than what they are. They should not be losing six nothing, five one, like getting blown out. Like that shouldn't be happening. But then again, when you look at the team, like when you look at the team, like they have they have AHL goalies <laughs> right now, two of them. So, right, Jake Allen was doing his best. God bless Jake Allen, but he's still a backup. Right, he's still not a. He's still not going to start for the majority of other teams in the league. He's just not. And they, they're they full of American Hockey League players right now. Um, God, like it's just, it's, so, but it's really awful. No one should be really surprised about this because, first of all, the team is completely different than the team that made a run in the playoffs last summer because there's no right. Carey Price, there's no Shea Weber, there's no... I know the next few guys I'm going to name are not, you know, superstars, but there's no Philip Deneau, there's no um, Paul Byron, and there's no Yasperi Kotkaniemi. And I know that Paul Byron and Yasperi Kotkaniemi might not be all-stars, but they were integral in the Canadiens' playoff run in the summer. So the team is completely different. There's also another component that was in the Canadiens' playoff run, which was that fourth line with Corey Perry and Eric Stahl. (laughs) Right, exactly. I didn't even mention that. That was huge, right? Right, that was huge. And... That team that had that playoff run, first of all, they were very lucky to be playing in a weak Canadian division. I know no one in Canada wants to hear this, but that Canadian division was weak last year. And the only reason the Canadians made the playoffs is because Ottawa and Vancouver and Calgary were terrible. So then, then then Montreal got lucky and played Toronto in the first round. Toronto always loses in the first round, no matter who they play. And... Yeah, they swept Winnipeg, which was unexpected. So they and then had, they beat Vegas. They beat Vegas, which you can't right. No, deny. beating Vegas was legitimate. I'm not. I'm not. You know. But then you saw when they when they played Tampa, they were not in the same league as Tampa. Like Montreal was not the second best team in the NHL last year. I agree with that. Now you know, like you know, like well, I don't know if you know this. Like you know, like this old story, like the most famous blues like guitarist from like, I don't know, 1940 or whatever, Robert Johnson, like they call him like the father of the blues. Right. So there's this old story. Like it's like a myth. Well, obviously it's a myth, but like the story is like he sold his soul to the devil to be able to become this amazing blues guitarist. Right. The devil took his soul. So basically that's what the Canadians did. They, they gave every ounce of luck, uh, karma, whatever you want to call it, puck luck hockey gods like all this every ounce of anything that they had in the bank they sold it to the devil to get as far as they could in the playoffs and then they fell short against tampa like you said they were not the second best team and now they don't have any of that other stuff left now now it's gone all their mojo's gone and they're just at the bottom of the barrel I think this is a good thing, though, because maybe management will and ownership will now realize that it's time to blow it up and do an actual rebuild, like none of this on-the-fly rebuild that they've been doing for the last five years. Well, we're going to see. We're going to see what happens at the trade deadline because clearly they're going to be 
not in a playoff position and they're going to be close to last in the league, that that's just not changing by the time the trade deadline rolls around. So we're going to see like who's gone. Is is that is this it for Brendan Gallagher? Are we going? Is he going to get traded? Like the weird thing is, is that some of the guys that they should trade are guys that they just brought in within a year or two ago. Right, Mike Hoffman. Josh Anderson, Tyler Toffoli, those are good players, but that's not the type of player that the team needs because that, if you're going to be good this year or next year, you need those guys. If you're not going to be good for another three, four, five years, you don't need those guys. So I saw the most interesting stat. Now, I don't remember exactly what the stat was, so bear with me, but it was something like they showed like the top 20 in the league of turnovers that lead to scoring chances, right? So when you commit a turnover that leads to a direct scoring chance to the other team, Canadians had five of the top 12 in the national hockey league in this terrible stat, <laughs> right? All five of their basically starting defensemen, you know, Petrie, Savard, Sherratt, Kulak, and Romanov are all in the top 12 in the national league at committing turnovers that lead to direct scoring chances. So that tells you something about what's going on with the defense. <laughs> and it doesn't, that doesn't surprise me actually. No, it doesn't surprise me at all. The defense is brutal. Like it's brutal. By the way, if you look at the standings, look at the team that's just below Montreal, it's Ottawa. And by the way, Ottawa yeah. has played four fewer games than Montreal. Well, Ottawa is also half the team is like uh, quarantining. Right, right, now, right, right. right. So what I'm saying, my point is Ottawa's not going to make the playoffs either. But mm -hmm. if I'm a fan of that team, I'm much more optimistic than a fan of, of the Montreal Canadiens because Ottawa's full of young players who are yeah. projected to be really good in a few years. Yeah. No, the Canadians have their share of young players that are going to be good. We know who they are. We don't have to tell you like Suzuki, Caulfield, these guys are going to be good, but there's not enough of those guys, right? Right. There isn't. There isn't, right? And especially in the, like, yeah, anyways. So that's the Canadians. There's one thing more about hockey uh, I just want to talk about. We never talked about the whole Kyle Beach thing with the the Blackhawks and the cover-up and, right. and the whole thing. And, and I don't want to get into, I don't want to get into the whole story. Obviously, it doesn't take anybody to, anybody with a brain that looks at the story is like, this is awful. This kid was abused. They covered it up. The everybody covered it up, and it, the whole thing sucks, and it has to change. Like that's my feeling. Hockey culture sucks. That's the whole thing. But there's one thing that happened sort of a few days after that we never really talked about, and I had it on my list to mention to you. So you know, like a couple of days after the the big interview and the whole fallout and everything, and Batman did a press conference. It was via Zoom, I think, right? Yeah, it was Batman and Bill Daly together. Right. So Batman did his press conference, and. Rick Westhead, the guy who broke this story, who did all the work, that knows more about this story than anybody else, which, by the way, Rick Westhead, he's for up TSN, was basically frozen out of that press conference. Bettman was not going to let him ask a question. He wasn't going to let him participate in anything. And only because Pierre Lebrun, in his time, when, when Bettman called on Pierre Lebrun, Lebrun said in front of everybody, by the way, Rick Westhead needs to be able to participate in this thing. And he kind of put Batman on the spot and forced him. <laughs> that's the only reason why Westhead was allowed to, to be part of it. And that just goes to show you what an <laughs> Gary Batman is, because all he's doing is covering his ass. That press conference was a big show. It was all bull. It was for nothing. It was just for the NHL to come out and say, look at us. We're trying to do good when it's all, they're part of the cover up just as much as anybody else. You're you're a hundred percent right. That press conference was a really bad look on the NHL. I mean, I've already I don't like Gary Bettman even before, so now I don't like him even more. Um, so I, I mean, I don't need any more reasons to not like him. But there's there's another one to the list. And and yes, when I heard the story about how Rick Westhead was frozen out of that press conference, that bothered me a lot. And I mean, whatever. Like you said, the NHL. You're you're dealing with two lawyers, Bettman and Daly. All they want to do is, is protect themselves and they don't really say anything because anything they say is going to be held against them. Look, this is a guy, Gary Bettman, that still to this day will tell you that the headshots have nothing to do with getting uh, brain damage. Like, he, like he, he, he's telling you that hockey is perfectly safe and people could punch themselves in the head and it doesn't matter. Like he's still, I don't know whether he actually believes what he says, but this is what he's still saying to this day. You know, when we, right. when we have scientific evidence that points to the opposite, you know? <laughs> And the richest league in professional sports, the National Football League, 
has admitted it and has tried to make reparations and has tried to make changes in their game. But Gary Bettman in his little NHL is still holding the line like, no, no, no. (laughs) And I think part of the reason is because the NFL has the financial wherewithal to compensate these former players, but the NHL does not have that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's exactly what it is. The Skip and Josh podcast is available wherever you listen to podcasts. If you listen to the show through Apple Podcasts, please leave a review. To interact with the show, send an email to skipandjawshow at gmail.com. Follow the show on Twitter and go to Facebook to like the show page. And now for some final thoughts from the guys. Josh, do you have any like smaller topics that you'd like to end the episode with? I guess just congratulations to the Montreal Alouettes on making the playoffs, although they blew it last night because they could have hosted a home game, but now they're going to have to play on the road. Okay, that's fair enough. That's a, that's a good one, no? How about you? There's two little things. Um, so remember I told you that uh, Team Canada at the Olympics was going to be outfitted by Lululemon? <laughs> yes, I saw the launch of the, uh, of the, um, of the kit, the Olympic kit. I was going to ask you if you, I was going to ask you what you thought about it, like... Uh... Some of the things I like, some of the things I don't. Like, there's this really long coat that yeah. I saw John Tavares wearing. I mean, it's a little bit too long for me. But I think they stole that from, like, you know, the, the, at the Summer Olympics. I don't know if you saw China. They all had this coat you know, at the swimming, like, even at the Summer Olympics. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't see that, but Anyways. maybe that's, maybe that's where they got the idea. I don't know. But some yeah. of the stuff is nice. Some of it is, like, a little bit overkill, you know. Yeah, I thought it was nice, but it's like the colors were not like what I expected. It was like more pink or shades of pink instead of red and white, you know, but Yeah, well there's two different things. There's a red one, there's a red outfit and a white outfit. The white one is I'll never wear that. Not yeah. that I'm not that I'm going to be asked You're not to wear any of it anyways. <laughs> no, but you can you can yeah. go and buy this stuff, you know. Well, yeah, that's want. the reason why they and do I wouldn't, it. Right? And I wouldn't yeah. purchase the white one. If anything, I'd purchase the red one. But you're right. The red is not like an actual red. It's it's hard to explain. Now, the other thing I want to ask you about is uh, Tim Hortons. Have you heard about this? They've teamed up with the uh, pop, Canadian pop superstar, Justin Bieber. <laughs> I did hear something about this, but I forget. What what are they doing again? They're making these special uh, Tim bits um, called, called Tim Biebs. <laughs> But what do they taste like? What is the flavor? Tim Hortons will roll out the limited edition Tim Biebs in chocolate white fudge, sour cream chocolate dip, and birthday cake waffle on November 29th, exclusively in Canada and the United States, Josh. So I'm not even sure that those flavors are actually new flavors. Like they basically just took existing flavors and combined them is what they did. Because birthday cake's (laughs) been around, sour sour cream's been around chocolate's been around so they basically just took flavors and combined them is what they did yeah so i think uh november 29th it's nine days from now i'll i'll head over to tim hortons with my daughter and we'll uh we'll do a taste test on these uh, tim beeps that's a good idea i wonder if uh joe's gonna do that on his show you know damn well he's going to (laughs) you know damn well he's going to our friend joe friend of the show joe check out his i'll put a link to his youtube channel he has like Canada versus American of every type of thing. And uh, he's gonna definitely going to be all over this. Definitely, definitely. definitely. All right, Josh. So uh, we're heading into the home stretch of 2021. Only a few episodes left. So we'll have to... Uh, I do have some topics up my sleeve for next time, or maybe you do also. But I'm ready to do our year-end episode already. Me too. I've been ready for like a few months, I think. <laughs> all right. So uh, I'll talk to you next time. All right. Have a good week. <laughs>